Hi, I'm Samantha Cox, BMI's Vice President of Creative, and I'm excited to introduce BMI's She is the Conversation. Each episode will feature a discussion between two professional women in the music industry, songwriters, engineers, producers, artists, and beyond, sharing stories, creative advice, and insights into advancing as a woman in the music business. This project grows out of our work with She is the Music, a global nonprofit network that fights for equality, opportunity, inclusion, and meaningful change for women in music. The initiatives include an all-female songwriting series, a database of women creators, mentorship programs, and more. BMI proudly supports the efforts of She Is The Music to help women working in the industry and those of future generations. Today, I'd like to welcome Taylor Parks and Laura Anderson. Taylor's an incredible songwriter and recording artist who's written hits like High Hopes for Panic at the Disco, Seven Rings, and Thank You Next for Ariana Grande, Love Lies for Khalid and Normani, and many more, as well as recording her own songs like I Want You, Fight, Me Versus Us, one of my favorites. And Laura Anderson is also an amazing singer-songwriter. Laura's collaborated with writers like Steve Mack, Justin Tranter, Diplo, and Fred Gibson, among others. In fact, Taylor signed Laura to her publishing company, Parks Publishing. This is just one of the ways Taylor is leading the charge in supporting talented women in the industry. Welcome, and thank you so much for sharing your conversation with BMI. Yo, what up, you guys? It's your girl, Taylor Parks, and... Laura Anderson. Yes, and we are having a conversation. This is the She is the Conversation presented by BMI. And I'm super, super, super excited to be talking to one of my um, very much so like we collaborate all the time. Um, we're also like have the publisher and writer relationship, also just the homie relationship. Uh, so this is going to be a really fun conversation. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So, I mean, I guess you could tell the people a little bit about how we met. What, what do you feel like you remember it like? I just remember one uh, dark winter in Stockholm. My manager, uh, who, who's known you for a couple of years, said that you were going to be coming by town and planned a couple sessions for us. And also, at the time, you were looking to start your publishing company. So it was kind of getting to know each other in that way, too. And... Uh, man those first sessions just meeting you and seeing the way you work like it was immediately like oh i just want to do as much music with you as i possibly can okay yeah i think like two or three days i think it was really short but yes yes but we were just yeah. kind of knocking them out i think that yeah if people have like worked with me they know similar to like the way that i like to work which is very like, like yeah. get it get it all out you know, and you know, I'm kind of the one that blurts out every type of idea because I don't feel like any idea is stupid, obviously, because we work very well in that way um, where it's, I think that we're both melody driven. What would you say? Yeah, definitely getting that down first or like getting a sense for what the song is. Like you get the melody, but then you're like, oh, but what's the music video? And then it just is like step by step. I feel like they kind of follow each other, what the song is and what the melodies are. Yeah, and that's the coolest part about collaboration is everybody kind of has their different way of going through that yeah. gradual phase. And then also sometimes you make music the exact same way as the next person that is like very similar to me and you, you know, and it just kind of works. What was the thing that got you into music in the first place? I mean, for me, it kind of happens through like film music. Uh, I got an opportunity when I was in my senior year of college and got to do like a, a, a sound track song for a TV show. And then it was thinking more filmically first. And I just thought that was so incredibly fun to see a world and try to match a song to what was happening in that world. And then it just evolved from there. For me, I noticed that I would like the music um, in those films and I learned how to play like piano to some of those soundtracks. So like, you know, the Danny Elfman soundtrack and, and things like that, I really, um, just got another side of my brain going, you know, that I really yeah, it's enjoy. Different. It's like so much more emotional sometimes because you can yeah. let them slip under the visuals rather than being like front and center. 
Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can like meld those two together too. For me personally, the reason why I got into music, I don't even think that there's a specific reason versus just the music was in me. You know, yeah. it's just like literally my, my, my mom was in the army and she dropped me off to my grandmother's for like, you know, when when she went off to work one summer and came back and my grandmother was like, your child can sing, you know? And I it kind of that, really? started, from, started from there. And my mom's side of my family is very, very like just musical. So it's, it's one of those things, but everything else, I think because music and the music industry in itself has so many different layers, you start to learn that there's there's a whole world, you know, right yeah. there kind of to unravel. What do you think was like your first moment where you're like, oh, okay, I'm a professional songwriter? I mean, honestly, like it, it kind of started when I started getting involved with working with you because I was just working in Stockholm. But then as soon as we were collaborating more and I was coming out to LA, I was seeing it at a whole different level, a whole different pace. And it just was like, a whirlwind of seeing all the different ways, like you say, music can be made and, and how there are so many different genres and approaches. So that was really when it felt like, okay, I'm in it now, like all the way. I feel like I had that moment where it was like, okay, the same when I kind of started to work with Babyface and, you know, and now another person who's on at Parks Publishing, Cameron, um, yeah. of really being in a real studio because I come from a world of just, I think, like every, every other songwriter and that's literally making music in your bedroom. So the moment that I wasn't making music in, my, in just my bedroom anymore, I was like, ha ha. Okay, I'm a professional. <laughs> Before your first like big studio session or were you already in that mindset of like, like I got this? Yes, like I mean, it's funny because I, I started off writing in my room and then I saw myself as professional after I got out of writing in my bedroom. But then yeah. that first big placement for me in my mind at that time happened to be something that I wrote and produced in my living room. So uh -huh. it, was, it was just funny. And it also went to the thing, go, goes to the point of it doesn't really matter where you are, but wherever or wherever you draw that confidence in to know like, I deserve to be in these rooms and I deserve for my music to be heard and, and all of those things, which is something that I think as a woman, you know, in, in what we do is something that is, we don't see, we see it, Far less, you know, a woman having a problem of being like, you know, confident, taking her shit and, you know, really, really doing it versus, you know, seeing a man. Yeah. And it's and it's been interesting because I've personally been surrounded by a lot of really incredible women, both, you know, whether it's, you know, my publishers, my PROs, whether it's the a &Rs that I work with, the songwriters, the executives. I've been really, really, really blessed to be around some badass women, you know, and work yeah. with them on a consistent basis. But I know that even them being in that position, it's taken a long time for them to even, for that even to be almost normal. Yeah, just thinking like 10 years ago, like it was so much more of a male dominated industry. And I'm sh sure hopefully the trend's just going to keep evening out as time goes on. I think we're just having these hard conversations that need to be had and that's a, a major reason why I wanted to be a publisher myself too because I saw yeah. a minute even once you know they do hire these incredible women at these massive um, companies they their opinions are overlooked you know and then it's like well why hire somebody that you aren't willing to listen to anyway and you know I would see these incredible women overlooked in, in numerous um, in numerous companies you know whether it was a label or a publishing company but I knew that me being the artist but also being able to affect you know like create an ecosystem around myself which is yeah. well, that's what Park Studios is that's what Parks Publishing is that's why I created Burnout you know because I wanted to to make sure that I set myself up in positions where I could see where the problem is but also how can we help the problem that's the point for 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 us is to all make progress you know and that's you know goes beyond color it goes beyond you know sex it goes beyond any of those things it's it's just about being able to inspire somebody and you can only inspire when you have the freedom to be able to create and that's on both sides on the, the creative side and on the business side definitely when you're in the studio what do you feel like is an instrument that you 
you couldn't go out? Do you play any instruments? Oh, I mean, enough to communicate an idea. Mm -hmm. I think the guitar. It, like it only takes a couple chords to like yeah. get down a feeling and I think the yep. guitar is my favorite. What about you? Piano will be my favorite. I think it's because I started off playing piano. But okay. then it was just, I always had more access to guitars. So it was just like whatever. But I think I, I sometimes, and it people laugh at me in the studio when I do this, but sometimes I'll just sing what the chord is and have them play it. I'll say the chord is this three notes, you know, oh, or wow. it's an instrument that sounds like this and you know like people know that I, I'm i very like I use my body a lot and I use my voice a lot when I'm in the studio I'm very like whatever I can do, do to get my point across <laughs> what would you say is the most rewarding part of the creative process is it you know connection is it getting out an idea what would you see what would you say is the most creative part for you like when you kind of been searching playing some chords trying some ideas but the moment when it clicks and you're just like oh I feel the core. I know what the center of this is, and now I'm excited. To, like yes, that I, I think. Is it gives you yeah, exactly. When you're just like, oh, I get it now. Like you've been searching, and then it just like lights up. Can you remember the first song that you ever wrote? I think I can. Uh, I didn't play the guitar or the piano yet, and I was like maybe nine years old, mm -hmm. and I think it was called "I Hate You," and. Ah. and I didn't have a boyfriend or anything, but it was about a boy. I think I'd watch Cheese All That or something. And uh -huh. you know, along those lines. Uh, what about you? Like, I had, like, I don't know, I can remember, like, little gists of it. Like, one, I could tell that I was definitely listening to a lot of Alicia Keys, you know? And then another... Um, was called like computer love and it like i wrote it about like you know my best friend and her like her like boyfriend at the time you know whatever like always talking on myspace or something and it samples zap project it samples zap project. it was like my first little sample you know <laughs> how old were you then i don't know i was like 10 or 11. like but no maybe i was like no 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 i had to be on that i was like 12. Wow. okay so the next thing that I want to do is I want to do some rapid fire questions. Okay. 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 So describe yourself in three words. Um. Oh. Uh. Ooh. Rapid fire, Lord. Rapid fire. Optimistic, <laughs> curious, and. Uh, observant what about you okay okay um you took one of my favorite words but i'm just gonna use it anyway i am curious i am silly and i am brave what would your dream collaboration be Ooh. at the moment like something with andrew lloyd webber would be crazy Going in the musical territory. Oh, yes, girl. I love that. I love that. Okay, what was the first album that you purchased? Britney Spears, I think. Hmm. Maybe one more time. Okay. What is your go-to karaoke song? All by myself. I love that okay, one. Because you're going to show them vocals. I can't help it. <laughs> Do you have a spirit animal? I don't, I haven't found my spirit animal yet, but I really love dogs. Like, you know, when you're walking down the street, you just look at a dog and like there's connection. Like, it's like, oh. the next question <laughs> What is the last concert that you went to? Your concert. Oh, me too, girl. That was the last one I went to. Was it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or Corona. Yeah, you came back just like in January or something. Literally, I was like, sorry, we can't do the last show. Like, we had to cancel the the last show, which was really sad because I... Was really that supposed to be? Um, it was supposed to be in Paris. Um, and I just had to, you know, I had to look out for my what's best for my health and also my team. So, you know, sometimes you gotta do that. Well, anyways, thank you 
so much Laura for having this conversation with me. The She is the conversation presented by BMI and She is the Music. I want to thank my BMI family. I want to thank you. I want to thank everybody tuning into this for um tuning into our to our convo. Thank you for having me. Yes, yes, it's always a, a good time, a good time. So whatever man, whoever's watching, make sure that you're out there following your dreams, doing it, whatever, what you want to do it. <laughs> Bye, girl.